Get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. His style and uh, who he learned from and um, what he's thinking during games and how they have matched things over the years. Because <clears throat> um, you spend, you, you know, I've been in the league for a while and I've spent time in a couple of different systems, uh, but never really this th- this one. And not to say that this is a system. Flo's got his own his own thing, but he obviously is going to take from, you know, places he's been. So um, that was, honestly, that was a big draw in, um, in staying here is, is getting to learn from him. You know, he kind of looks like a hitman. He does. <laughs> Doesn't he? Yeah. He looks like he's got sort of a, do you remember that movie with the movie Drive? Oh, Ryan yeah. Gosling. Great from, film. Yeah. Really good one. He looks like he Should could be that. wearing some leather gloves and driving around. Yes. You know, at two o'clock in the morning, maybe helping with crimes or something. I think I told you guys when we did Gone in 60 Seconds, I think I could be like a getaway driver. I would love to be a driver. Do you like, think you're a good enough driver? Yes. I personally Ooh. think so. I, I think lift, I think that about myself too. Uh, I was a I'm Lyft not. driver for a bit, so I mean I, I and and that was <laughs> driving like that. Driving like that. The fun fact of Lyft driving, I do get really bad road rage. Like it is a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's going to that's not going to necessarily but, make what? you a good driver. But you know, here's the thing. Because I was a Lyft driver and because I had to interact with strangers, I I couldn't show that because that would look bad. So actually it for like the four months I was a Lyft driver in 2018, that was the best I've ever combated my road rage, and then I stopped Lyft driving, and yeah, my road you rage can't, has returned. You can't just be sitting there in a Lyft. You, you, you got someone in the back seat. So uh, where, are you, where are you guys off to? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> hey, bleep face. Yeah, I can't. I can't do that. My but. wife gets mad at me because I have, like, passive-aggressive road rage. It's... It's more, you know, somebody will cut me off, and I'll and I'll put my hand out the window, like you know, oh, like I, this I, kind of thing. I'll honk. You know? I, have, I have no problem. You should with never. You, no, back off on that. That's the, that's the stupidest thing. Now, just let it. You know what? Unless they almost killed you, ignore it. No, ignore I it. Refuse. <laughs> no. Ignore it. You never know who has a dead. sawed off shotgun. That's how people end there. up dead, man. People are crazy <laughs> Today now. I'd bring me the news. <laughs> nope, nope. Just ignore oh, it. Man. But but oh, man. but Smith. Here's his thing. I think among all Vikings all time dating to 1961, he would be in the top five of guys who can change his looks on a dime. <laughs> he could have a, yeah, he could have like a painter's mustache. He could have short hair. Long, he could shave. Hair. Didn't he shave his head at one point too? Yeah, I think he, he did. did. But yeah. I mean, he could grow out. The locks can look great. They can be long oh. and flowing. They, they can be tight. To your point, they can be gone. Like he could actually, th- through the years of Harrison Smith, could look like a different guy each season. Yeah, I think we should, we should pick like a movie character out. The different movie characters of Harrison Smith. By the way, if uh, if you're wondering what the hell, if this is the first time you've ever consumed Purple Daily, <laughs> yeah, Declan's crazy. Know, kind of sorry, I guess. <laughs> Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. Thank thank you to all of you crazy Vikings fans for making this one of the most popular football podcasts in America over the past year and change. Uh, TCL is back on board, an official partner of the NFL and Purple Daily. No matter what you watch, TCL has award-winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. And TCL makes more than just TVs. They offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances. TCL brings you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. Learn more at TCL.com. We are, what, what, eight days away from the Purple Daily slash Surly slash Park Tavern draft party. Mm-hmm. Park Tavern in St. Louis Park is the epicenter of night one of the NFL draft for you guys, Purple Daily fans, Vikings fans. Six o'clock, April 27th. That's next Thursday. Six o'clock start time. Seven o'clock, Purple Daily goes live on YouTube from Park Tavern. We'd love to meet as many of you as possible. So don't be bashful. Come on up. Let us know. Stay at people, Judd's house. Stay at Judd's house if you yeah, want. Actually, if you can't find I, mean, hotel. I am close. I'm going to tell you yeah. right now. I am Stumble close. down the street. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, we're counting down the days, eight days until the draft party. All right, boys. We love to rank things on both this show and our other daily show, uh, Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd. Judd, you put together an interesting ranking or I guess a list on VikingsWire.com. Let's turn it into a pecking order here. Okay. The top Vikings draft picks for each round since you started covering the team 
almost 20 years ago. 2006. So the first uh, Brad Childress draft. 2006 was my first draft. And un- unlike most of our lists like this, I'm actually going to start at the top because I think it's more Ooh. exciting to start at the top and work okay. your way down to round seven um, because there's going to be more intrigue, I think, by the time that we get to the later rounds about who was the best pick. But I decided... So I started in 2006, and I decided, you know what? I'm going to go through every draft and give you my top player from each round. And I'll start in round one, and it's interesting because I think the recency bias of this discussion is going to say, yeah, yeah, that's easy. It's Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson is a great pick. I mean, there's been there's they've been a actually lot of good had, picks. they've had some, for as many clunkers as they've had in the first round. They've yes. also drafted Hall of Famers in the first round. They have indeed, and so after much internal debate about the first round, about the top first round pick, while I do believe that Jefferson is a future, certainly on the track he's going, Hall of Famer, I decided to go with a guy that fell to the seventh overall pick back in 2007, Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson was, now keep in mind, this was an interesting situation because Adrian Peterson, if he came out now, I think just because he was so effective, there, there'd be debate. He might be a top five pick now. Don't know for sure. In 2007, he definitely should have been, but because there was mm-hmm. concern uh, among other things about his shoulder. He, he was coming off, I think it might have been a collarbone or something like that yeah, at, it was, at yeah. Oklahoma. He fell to the seventh pick. Now, keep in mind, the Vikings were coming off a year in which Chester Taylor, long time, or a backup in Baltimore, uh, had signed here and had rushed for 1,216 yards and caught 42 passes in 2006. So, like, they had Chester Taylor. Very productive. And they basically said, hold on a second. This guy slipped to seventh. We'll take him. So for right now, in my opinion, starting in 2006 through 2022, Adrian Peterson is atop this list. Wow. Controversial because I think there's three other worthy names of discussing. Again, this is is just since 2006 here, folks. So Randy Moss doesn't qualify. This is since Judd started covering the Vikings as a beat writer, lead. Yeah. No, Vikings. I wasn't the lead at this time. No, Seifert, Seifert was the was lead. lead. Oh, and Seifert then when he left, I became the lead. So let's not mistake. This was me, <laughs> just a, a sidebar guy, backup guy. But yes, 2006. Uh, this is also around the time that uh, old Macadac started covering the Vikings as an intern for uh, for Young, Fan Radio. Fresh faced. And Holding I would say uh, I was watching this draft live as a eighth grader, ninth grader. Yeah, and thanks, my thanks friend threw his pillow in disgust when they took AP instead of Brady Quinn. Oh, you know, as a diehard Notre Dame fan, I thought Brady Quinn was going to be Mount Rushmore of all-time great quarterbacks in the NFL. Oh. Um, so Harrison Smith was a first-round pick. Yep. Justin Jefferson. Chad Greenway was also a first-round pick in 2006. Correct. And uh, he might be headed for the Vikings ring of honor at some point. But I think, boy, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to fight you on Adrian Peterson because he is one of the greatest players in franchise history Mm -hmm. Harrison Smith had the longevity though I mean I mean Adrian had some longevity but Harrison Smith playing at that level for you know over a decade very interesting and Justin Jefferson I think if you gave it like three more years would probably have to be the pick here but I see I see what you're doing you're making him prove it yep so well and I mean it it can't just be I I mean it's got to be a little bit controversial too right (laughs) <laughs> no, no list is good if you don't try and stir the pot just a, a bit. Um, the interesting thing about the Harrison Smith pick is this. It's arguably one of Spielman's greatest moves. Because if you recall, that was the 2000 and was it the 2012 draft? Yes. That he moved, I believe they made a trade with Baltimore, and he moved back into the draft at the last second at the end of, of the first round. So that wasn't the Vikings' first round pick. They basically said, holy cow. Yeah, this guy just fell. Uh, so I would say that if we were to pick Rick Spielman's savviest, best moves, that's right up there to yeah. get back in. Yeah. All right. Uh, second round. Okay. Second round is three choices. Again, this is going to be somewhat controversial because I was stirring the pot. Um, second round, I've got three choices that include Kyle Rudolph, 
mm-hmm. Dalvin Cook, and Eric Kendricks. So when it came to this one, Dalvin Cook got strong consideration. Uh, if I am correct on this, the Vikings didn't have a first round pick the year that they took Cook, which I think was 2000 and was it 17? And so they took Cook, who had character questions and also played a position that probably caused him to fall as well. I could have picked him, but I decided, do I really want to go back-to-back running backs? Do I really? Like, that's sort of by the numbers. That's sort of boring, you know? On longevity, on production, and in his prime, which he certainly wasn't by 2022, he was damn good. I picked Eric Kendricks. Yeah. That's, I think that's the right pick. No, I, I think I, I don't think I would have picked him, but I think Brian O'Neill deserves to be mentioned in this discussion. He's mm-hmm. he's one of the better offensive linemen they've had in the last, you know, well, basically during that stretch since 2006. Brian O'Neill is one of their best offensive linemen. But, yeah, Eric Kendricks, longevity, just constantly healthy, it seemed like, too, playing a, a violent position <laughs> where you're just constantly banging your head into running backs and tight ends. And uh, he'll go spend another couple years playing for, you know, the Chargers in his hometown. And then he'll come back and maybe be part of a Ring of Honor ceremony. So, tough to fight I to an Eric I think Kendrick. he definitely will. And mm-hmm. and the guy who, that probably qualifies as the what if from this draft, and he had one great year, but besides that was banged up a lot, 2007, Sidney Rice. Oh, that is a good what if. Like, he's not on this list, but Sidney Rice had the talent to be. Just it's what a weird career, man. I mean, Brett Brett Favre kind of made him in 2009. So, like, the version we saw of him was highly elevated in 2009. But then he just, like, he had the hip injury. He had the one season. He had the yes. one season. Kind of but crazy. he was great. The weirdest Favre thing um, that occurred here in Green Bay in 2000, I want to say it was uh, four, which, which was my, or 2000, yeah, 2004, my last year covering the Packers, is the career arc, the similarities between Javon Walker and Rice. Javon Walker had one of those same type of Mm -hmm. years, like Pro Bowl, unbelievable. This guy's a future, just, you know, breakout type of talent. And Favre made, Favre basically declared at some point in time that those two guys were his guys. And then Favre left, or in Javon's case, I think he tore up his knee, and that was it. You know what's funny? I just opened Sidney Rice's Twitter account. He's just he's a huge golf fan. He's just, like all of his tweets oh, really? while well, there's like three golf he was watching the match at one point. Or what is this? What March twenty sixth. <laughs> Scotty and Sam trading favors back and forth. The match continues on the twentieth hole. I'm almost certain Rory's ball just rolled an extra hundred yards down the fairway. <laughs> he's just like live tweeting golf. Just hanging out. Um oh, he lives in Seattle. Okay. Surprised I didn't run into so we him stayed there. a wine bar somewhere. Oh, yeah, exactly right. Hey, Sydney, what's going on? What the <laughs> hell happened to your career, dude? <laughs> All right, uh, third round. Let's go to the third round here. A lot so, of great cornerbacks in the third round to choose from. That's what I was going to say. Josh Robinson. <laughs> yep. Marcus McCauley. Marcus McCauley. Yeah. Asher Allen. The third <laughs> round is really weird because in going back through this, the, the third round since 2006 is remarkably unproductive. They actually, like, don't draft many guys in the third round for some reason. Yes, yes. Oh, well, there's one obvious. I just, okay. I see. Four, 14 third-round picks have been selected by the Vikings since 2006. Four of those came, of course, in the Kellen Mond 2021 draft when they had four third-round picks, of which there is one left, but there is only one guy to choose. Yeah. Daniil Hunter, one of the most wow. incredible third-round picks that the Vikings will ever have. And I haven't done this exercise, so I'm kind of just going along with you here, but this is a grand canyon between it's the incredible. number one choice and yes. anyone else. I mean, it's Cam Cam Dantzler was a third round pick, Alex Madison, so like a, a backup running back, a one year starting cornerback, uh Jarek McKinnon. God, Scott Crichton. What what happened to that guy? Not gonna, Remember that not guy? gonna work it. Yeah. That was the 72nd overall pick, just like didn't play, basically. And then yeah, you've th- got this, this is guy no-brainer. who's phenomenal. Yeah, total no-brainer here. The okay. two, the 2000, I mean, th- this is worth just going back on for a second. The 2021 third-round class, <laughs> Kellen Mond, 
Chaz Surratt, who was a college quarterback turned linebacker who they took in the third round, who probably should have been like a seventh round pick. Wyatt Davis, who we all thought was going to start at guard and never even got a chance because he came in out of shape and was uh, let go, I think it was last summer finally. And then defensive end Patrick Jones II, who is still here and I think has a chance. How underwhelming is that, though? I mean, this is day two of the draft. What's more incredible, and I think uh, our guy Tyler Fornis was tweeting this the other day, is Spielman had some home run picks in the first round, the last two drafts, right? Justin Jefferson, Christian Derrissa. Home run picks. Those mm-hmm. are going to be basically all pro players. Jefferson already is one. Derrissa's on his way to being one. But those third round misses, too, like those are atrocious a- analy- <laughs> analyzations of those picks. Like Rick put out an album. Rick put out yeah. an album with you know, here's twelve Self-titled. songs on my album. Like there's one, <laughs> one hit wonder banger, and then just oh. ten pieces of crap. Apparently, he drafted, I think it was twenty four. No, he drafted like twenty five players or something, or maybe more than that, over two thousand twenty and two thousand twenty one. Two of the best players in recent Vikings history, in Christian Derisaw and Justin Jefferson. Yep, and then a bunch of randoms. <laughs> And there's a K.J. Osborne in there. There's a Cam Bynum, you know, mixed in. Ezra Cleveland, I guess, but amazing. D.J. Oh. Wanham. But these are just kind of re- replaceable guys for the most part. What happened? How do you draft Chaz Surratt? Like, what do you look at? What are you watching from a college quarterback <laughs> that says, you know what? We're going to take this guy in the third round. What Line was his backer. relative athletic score? That's my question. Yes. Hold on. Chaz the Raz. Surat Raz. I bet it was high. Had to be high. Yep. 8.47. They got tantalized by the Raz. I'm sure he's doing really well. Tantalized by the Raz. It, it was the a XFL. 90th percentile 40, 83rd percentile 20 yard split, 90th percentile shuttle drill. Yeah. Oh, shuttle drill. And uh, 86th percentile bench press. He was a, a, a Raz master. <laughs> this Chaz is why the, the Raz combine. Master. This is why. The combine can be the devil. Yeah, you got to be careful. If a guy isn't good at football but benches a lot, just be careful. Spielman's so. whole thing of, you know, we're going to go to the combine and outsmart the system. It's like, no, you're not. Uh, fourth round coming up here in just a moment. But let's tell our friends, the audience, about Livia and how they can change their lives heading into, I guess, the summer is coming up soon. Yes, and uh, debuting th- this week, a new offer from our friends at Livia Weight Control Centers, and here it is. You are, if you want to look at like that guy, if you want to look like, I mean, lean, mean fighting machine, right that's for a summer. Raz score right there. That's, that's a, a Raz. Yeah, score. you want Spiel- <laughs> Spielman would have drafted that's me in the second Raz. round, if not the first round. The offer is this: you will join today and receive three months for free. So you talk about dancing. Into summer, looking good, feeling good. Livia is going to get you there. And then the best part is they're going to help you maintain the weight loss because this is not a diet. This is weight control. This is all about their uh, dietitians and nutritionists helping you get your life on track and keeping it that way. And that's the most important thing. Again, three months free if you join today. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A, Livia.com, L-I-V-E-A.com. If you want to look good feel good, and most importantly, get all of those clothes that might not fit now to fit soon. Livia will fix you up. It's almost officially riding season here. It was it was sort of the tease of riding season last week. Pretty soon it'll be officially riding season. Make sure your motorcycle is ready with Dennis Kirk, whatever you need. Uh, you'll find what you need at DennisKirk.com so you can ride more weight less. Over 180,000 parts and accessories in stock, clothing and helmets as well. Shipping is free for orders over $89. If you order by 8 p.m., they ship the same day. DennisKirk.com. All right, fourth round. Okay, fourth round, we will start with the runner-up here. Since 2006, the Vikings draft pick, so 2006 through uh, 2022, the time that I have covered this team, including part of it as the lead beat writer to Star Tribune. Hmm. Um, The runner-up is Brian Robison. 102nd pick in the fourth round, 2007. Incredibly stable, reliable, could start, could uh, could shift inside at times. But I think the top pick, I think the best pick in the fourth round to me since 2006 is pretty clear. The 100th selection in 2010, 
out of Southern Cal was Everson Griffin. Yes. Um, he turned oh, into yes. now. Now he had what's what's weird about this is he had question marks coming in. Got off to I a. I mean, he's organizing party buses to Vegas. You know, he just yeah. he just likes to have some fun. Well, before he did that too, and, and I think this was after his first year here, in which he did not play much. I want to say he was arrested in Southern California twice that summer, including once for grabbing a policeman in an area that you, that men don't want to be grabbed. <laughs> <laughs> and um and then oh and then God. what's sad is his career here came to an end with also uh certainly some uh what appeared to be mental health issues but in between he turned into one hell of a player i think it's pretty clear cut everson griffin is the top pick in the fourth round by the vikings since 2006 i'll give you one more honorable mention i th- I, th- I think this guy slots in fourth or uh third behind the other two fourth round picks you just mentioned Ray Edwards was a good, solid mm-hmm. fourth-round draft pick in 2006. You know, he played a handful of years, sort of opposite Jared Allen. He was the fourth guy on that great offensive line that everyone kind of forgot about. But he was a good, solid edge rusher and then put together a professional boxing career I, afterwards. That's, I can't do that. Like, I have I have had to block <laughs> out the, the fact that Pelissero and I went to, I want to say, Duluth to cover his boxing match, his boxing debut against a tomato can. Is it bl- a Black Bear Casino? Or what? It might have been. It was one of the most painful sporting events I've ever watched. They didn't know how to or box. Or was it Hinkley? I thought it was Grand Casino Hinkley. I blocked it out. I told you. I blocked the whole thing yeah, out. Hinkley and Duluth are not really close to one another. Yes, but they're like up north. They're up north. Well, Let's anyway. It was, it was Grand Casino Hinkley. <laughs> Grand Casino Hinkley. Okay, well, wherever it was, it was... It was hard to watch. It oh wait, I take that back. No, this is from. Uh, no, this is from. Bring me the news in 2018. Okay. So he was. <laughs> okay. So he fought again at Grand Casino Hinkley in 2018. Okay. But his his debut fight, which was on my birthday, May 20th, 2011. Yep, that's what he, Tom and I went to. He fought some like random fat guy, right? A tomato can, yeah. Just some guy brought in to lose. <laughs> it was just awful. I don't know where it was, but it was at a casino, a smoke-filled casino. We had to drive up north, and it was absol- an absolute waste of everyone's time, including Ray's. Yeah. So, anyhow, uh, on to the fifth round here. Fifth the round. fifth round of Judd's List. Fifth round, again, as clear-cut as can be, Stefan Diggs. Yeah. Stefan Diggs, who, who I think was coming off, if I am correct on this one, a broken leg uh, playing in college at Maryland. Uh, dropped because of that. There were question marks. And Rick Spielman, in this case, knocked it out of the park. 2015, which is a pretty damn good Spielman draft. I think that might be like the last really, really good draft. 2015, Stefan Diggs. Um, if nothing else, you turned him into Justin Jefferson. Well, yeah, they got they got some great years out of Diggs. And then in one of the greatest trades of all time for both teams, right? The Bills get Diggs, and the Vikings replace Diggs with Jefferson. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to see, like, is there any other fifth-round picks that are even worth... I mean, Tyler Conklin, was not anywhere near the Diggs level, but Conklin was a good, solid fifth-round pick. Tyler Conklin. K.J. Osborne was a fifth-round pick, worth mentioning. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's... Man, you're getting you're getting guys like Everson Griffin in the fourth round, Stefan Diggs in the fifth round. Why why did Rick Spielman get fired again? I can't remember. Um, look at 2022. Uh, look at oh, yeah. that's right. Or 21. Right. Okay, sixth round. And you know, Rick Rick takes a lot of stabs historically in the sixth and seventh rounds. So yes, he does. Yes, he does. And but in 2008, Rick was there, but I believe it was coach Brad Childress, who got on the phone with one of Phil's favorite coaches in Notre Dame history, Charlie Weiss. Chuck, old Chuck Weiss. Yeah, picked up the phone and called him and said, what can you tell me about this kid, John Sullivan? And Charlie Weiss said, good player, hard worker, you'll like him, incredibly smart, which he he was. Um, John Sullivan probably is a little bit too e- easily forgotten, but you know, keep in mind, after 2008, Matt Burke went to Baltimore. And, and so Sullivan played, I think, on special teams in his rookie year. But in 2009, with Brett Favre, I mean, Brett Favre comes in, right? Mm-hmm. And John Sullivan, in his second year, just sort of picks up the, the baton and goes and plays well. Now, he, he didn't have 
a super long career here, but he definitely worked out. So I picked John Sullivan as the best sixth round pick, and that's really a children's pick. Yeah, I think there's only one other sixth round pick that's that's worthy of an honorable mention because he had the greatest year in Vikings history at his position. Blair Walsh was also mm-hmm. a sixth round pick. <laughs> 10 for 10, 50 yard field goals. Yep. And then the wheels came off. Yep. And he had first graders writing letters to make him feel good after that Seattle. Joe Mexico. Webb, too. Yeah. Joe, Joe Webb, Webb was a sixth round pick. Brandon uh, uh, Fusco. Uh, yep. Okay, you guys. Brandon Fusco was the greatest <laughs> on our show. <laughs> he was. He talked about uh, tearing his pectoral muscle and how and how it felt like someone giving you the worst titty twister that you've ever had in your life, and they won't let go. <laughs> Thanks, <Right>. Brandon. <laughs> yes. So that's and this is also an illustration, and we'll get to even more here with your last round, the seventh. That this philosophy sometimes of like in 2011, Rick Spielman had six draft picks in the sixth and seventh rounds. Yes, those are totally worthless. Totally worthless. Like, you would rather trade a six-round pick for whatever the, the, the 2011 version of Dalvin Cook was. Get a veteran player or something, right? Mm-hmm. You can't find good players in the sixth and seventh rounds more than, like, oh. once in every 20. Right? Rick, di- Rick disagreed completely. Here, here was Rick. <laughs> here was, and I'm not joking here, and I'm not saying he was right. Here was his philosophy. His philosophy was to acquire as many, not surprisingly, sixth and seventh round picks as possible to stop those players from signing with other teams as undrafted free agents because he thought that they were so good at identifying. I'm not kidding. Oh, my God. That's why he did it. Oh, my God. What's going to happen if Michael Mowdy signs with the Carolina Panthers? We might regret it. I'm not defending it. I'm saying that's really what he talked about. Audi Cole might wind up on special teams for the Bears. Cole had one of the greatest preseason games in Vikings history, okay? Two touchdowns against the Bills at the Metrodome. So you watch your mouth when it comes to Adi Cole. What are you going to do if what are you going to do if Jack Tacho winds up on someone's training camp roster? You're screwed. I love Jack Tacho. But yeah, Austin thought, Cutting, I could keep going. He thought these small <laughs> college kids, he's like, I'm not going to allow them to sign as undrafted because I think that I know what I'm looking at. Yeah. All right. Yeah, just package those to move up. That's what I would recommend. Seventh round? Yep. Okay, possibilities from the seventh round. And I'm just going to throw <laughs> these out, okay, as seventh round possibilities Boy, for I'm this sure list. not sure we have enough time in the yep. show for all of the possibilities. Now, these are true Vikings fans. These are true Vikings fans. They want to hear the long list of possibilities. Defensive end, Stephen Weatherly. Safety, J. Ron Curse, who's actually gone on to be a For productive other te- player other in teams Dallas. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, but my pick here, and Phil, th- this is a guy that um, I believe that you covered on the beat along with me. Safety, Jamarca Sanford. He had a couple couple seasons. He did. He did. Well, I mean, it's the seventh is he round. The guy? Not a lot. Are we, is he an honorable mention or is he nope, the guy? Nope, nope, nope. He's the guy. I picked yeah. him. That's Jamarca it. Sanford. Yeah. Um, the one thing I loved is... Jamarcus Sanford, if he played now, would probably be thrown out of a ton of games because he loved to light guys up. Like, he was old school. And at that point in time, they were, you know, you you got penalties, but not like now, right? And Jamarcus Sanford, exactly right, as the 231st selection in the 2009 draft. Um, Here's the most interesting thing, though. Here's the reason to pick him, if nothing else. He was taken one pick before the New England Patriots grabbed Julian Edelman. Wow. Yeah, I mean, well, you could argue that Tom Brady helped elevate Julian Edelman oh, sure. beyond, beyond I'm where just he may it's have interesting. been. <laughs> I'm just saying it's interesting that I, I didn't know that he had fallen into the seventh round, but Sanford started 44 of 70 games over five years, um, had a couple of picks in 2011, actually, for... Frazier and loved to blow up a receiver. No love for Tyler Thigpen out of Coastal Carolina. They lost him too quickly. Yeah, he went, on, he, he, he went to Kansas City because so Kansas City sniped him off waivers after the joint practices. And that was it for that. And Childers he, was done. He started one year. Now they went one in ten in the games that he started, but he's but he was the starting quarterback for Kansas City under I think it was under. Um, oh God, our guy. Uh, why am I blanking? Arizona State. Herm Edwards. Okay. Pretty sure Herm was the coach. And uh, so Thigpen 
tied for 13th in the NFL in touchdown passes that year with 18 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. I think I've told this story, but that year I was in a like fantasy football hell with quarterbacks. I had to start a different one every week. And one week I was forced to start Tyler Thigpen because he was the only like viable yeah. option in the waiver wire. And he actually like put up a pretty solid fantasy football effort, I remember, of yeah. like 14, 15 <laughs> points. And I was like, and then I thought I had something in Tyler Thigpen, like 15 year old Declan being this waiver claim on fantasy football. Oh. No, it was just a great one week pop up that helped me, yeah. you know, carry me to a week eight win in fantasy football. And, and then he eventually signed, I think it was after his time with the Chiefs, he signed with the Bills. Yes, and the Vikings tried very hard to bring him back, and I think we're going to give him an opportunity to start, or at least what? to beat. The Vikings were trying to... I, I remember talking to his agent around this time after his... I It was... It, oh, this would have been you know going what? into 2011. Actually, it was, actually, it's before... I think he signed with Buffalo. So I think it's after his time in Kansas City, he hits the market. The Vikings were in the mix to try and bring him back to compete for the starting job, and I think... He actually then went to Buffalo. So here's what happened. I guarantee you, just piecing it together. So he actually went to Miami. He was like traded to Miami, I think, or or cut by Kansas City. 2009-10, he was in Miami as a backup. And then uh, going into 2011 is probably when you, as the lead Vikings beat no, writer, I was the lead beat writer back for the Star Tribune. Yeah, put some respect on that. You probably caught wind of like, okay, the Vikings have it. They haven't landed Donovan McNabb yet. Yep. They may or may not have drafted Christian Ponder, but their quarterback situation was up in the air they in transition. It was, it was the first March. year post Brett Favre. It's March. So yep. maybe we'll draft a quarterback, bring in Thig Pen. That's oh, there's Donovan McNabb kind of a thing. Yeah. Joe Webb at some point. There it is. All right. Judd's top Vikings draft picks by a round since he started covering the Vikings in 2006. It's a pretty good list. That is no, I mean Adrian That's Peterson, nice Eric Hendricks, Daniil Hunter, Everson Griffin, Stefan Diggs, John Sullivan, Jamarcus Sanford, and a bunch of great honorable mentions, especially in the first handful of rounds. So yeah. Good stuff. All right. Thank as you. we push our way toward the draft party a week from Thursday. We are pumped. It's our Super Bowl, basically. So we're excited to see as many of you as possible at Park Tavern in St. Louis Park. We're gonna hit you with another episode of Purple Daily today, too. It's write that down predictions and an accountability session. Daily Vikings Entertainment.